got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. <laughs> Cool. So um, I think we're ready to begin. 43 people are in okay. um, the audience. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to PL Talk. This is uh, PL Talk, in case you didn't know where you were. Um, we're a weekly live stream co-hosted by Hong Yi and me. Um, Hong Yi is out for the second straight week in a row doing security people things, um, but he will be back soon. Um, next week, we're doing a very security thing. So uh, hopefully he's back for that. But I'm um, the goal of this live stream started with um, Hongi is a security engineer, but he started just emailing me about programming languages one day and I gave him like a lot of links and he's like, wow, I've always wanted to know about this stuff, but it's so like hard to figure out how. And so then during his time in between jobs, I was like, hey, Hongi, we should do a live stream, but I didn't really think that this would happen. I was just really into trying to live stream at the time. Um, but, you know, we did one, people showed up, uh, people like showed up again when we had a session about what should we keep live streaming about? And that was the birth of PL Talk. And so I'm, um, yeah, I guess for a little bit of background, I'm the founder of this company called Akita, where dev tools, API tools company. And so the today's topic is very near and dear to my heart. And today's guest is very near and dear to my heart because Paul um, was the co-founder of Circle CI. Um, he's well known for being a great, uh, great thinker in the dev tool space. And um, as as you may know, since this is why you're here, Paul has been working on Darkling, which is you know next generation programming with a complexity um, that is that is life. Um, and so. So yeah, Paul, um, I, I think, um, yeah, we'll, we'll let you spend a few minutes introducing yourself. I usually tell people like, don't spend too long, but I feel like your story is interesting enough that people want to know it. Um, and well, then thank don't you for that lovely intro. That, that was delightful. Yeah. And then don't worry, we'll get into demos, guys. Um, yeah. So Paul, please go ahead and talk about. Okay. Yourself. Okay. I, I didn't know it was my turn to talk. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This, this, this is great. I, I, I love this. Um, yes. My, my background, I, uh, I did uh, CS in, in, uh, uh, for my undergrad. Then I did a startup that went terribly. So I uh, did a PhD in compilers and static analysis. Uh, so specifically I did um, the, the topic of my dissertation was design and implementation of an ahead of time compiler for PHP. Um, the joke being I did a, I did a compiler called PHC, um, which compiled PHP for my PhD. So did that. Um, then after I finished, I did like this Y Combinator startup that was fucking horrendous. Let's, let's never talk about that again. Um, and then I did uh, I went to work at Mozilla. I was a, an engineer on the Firefox engine. I uh, honestly didn't accomplish much there either. Uh, and then I started CircleCI. And so that's like the, the, the one big win. Um, and I stayed at CircleCI for about four years. Um, got it, like I was, I was the CEO, got us to like, you know, a couple, a couple million revenue and then set down, let someone else take over. Um, and actually they, they, the Circle just announced a phenomenal fundraising round of like a hundred million at like 1.7 billion valuation. No, that's amazing. At crazy time. I was like, great. I, I, I did not take it that far, but I'm, I'm delighted um, with that. And then in 2017, uh, I started Dark. Um, and that's that's where I still am, uh, working every day on making Dark work. Cool. And um, Paul, you had mentioned you wanted to explain like the fairly recent uh, transition of like how dark is structured. I don't know if you want to talk mm -hmm. about that now or in the discussion section. Maybe, 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 maybe let's do it later. But but if you're one of the early people, I, I think that the message I would like to say is dark is not dead, not not by like a long shot. Yeah, I think it's really cool to see like dark being so active still. Um, oh, yeah, I have like related to your cat. Um, I have a thing. <laughs> I wanted to popularize Simon Peyton oh Jones as cats before. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Did, um, did, did that say Guido as possums? Yeah, well, I just Amazing. like, you know, I don't oh. know if you've seen my threads. I really like things as other things. And so, like, I, I found this picture of Simon. I found this picture of a cat. I was like, so same. And mm. so. <laughs> Um, I had some other suggestions for threads people can make, um, no. but yeah, do you want to just give people an idea of like why dark? Like, was there a moment in your life where you're like, man, we need dark or was it like a, more of an evolution? What is dark? I mean, it was definitely an evolution, like something, something that, that sort of came together over like five years of like thinking about like all the problems I had in my life and, and realizing that they were all the same. Um, so th th there's like a ton of different threads, everything from like thinking about like 
how closure is great, but also sucks to realizing that like building software that isn't the core competency in, in a company is just like too hard. Um, and you know, lots of realizations about programming languages, but, but fundamentally, um, that, uh, that any time that, that I went to write software, I would get bogged down in like all the work of writing the software and never the actual, you know, the, 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 the cool thing. And when I was in college, it was great. You do, you know, you do some sort of like project Euler or, you know, the, the Google had all this cool shit that, that, that you would do with algorithms and like, you just write it in Python on your computer. It'd be great. Yeah. And it's like, we're so, so far from that. Like we've regressed so much, even, even from like PHP scripts I, I wrote back in the day. Um, and so when, um, after, after circle, I you know, did a sabbatical, traveled around, went to recurse center in, in New York. Um, and the, you know, I was thinking about like, what am I going to do next in, in my life? Um, and the, you know, I had all these ideas about like startups that I might build. Um, and just like, you know, simple, dumb ideas that might be fun to chase down. And anytime I started down, down building one of them, I was just like, oh my God, how, how am I going to build this as like a, you know, one or two person company? I don't want to like constantly be maintaining this thing and, you know, all, all that and at the same time, I didn't want to do like a growth startup. I had done that with Circle and that, you know, burnt me out. Um, the, the demands of VC are just like constant and, and forever. Uh, and so I was like, I'm going to build a nice, you know, one person startup. Maybe, maybe it'll have like five people, maybe 10 people at, at some point. And, and then I decided not to do that. I was just like, this shit is too hard to build. I'm going to build the big solution to fucking everything. Um, and, and I sort of set, sat down. Uh, to I wrote a couple of like essays about it that I never published, but just like sent to a couple of people, and then uh, I started like emailing a couple of people at like Google and Microsoft, being like, "Can I come over and build this in your cloud?" And they were all like, "No." Um, so uh, raised some money and uh, and started building Dark. Cool, and I think I um I really started to appreciate Dark more because um so as I mentioned on Twitter, we're at Akita, we've sort of taken the opposite view of dark. We're just like, man, well, it's the exact same motivation, which is mm -hmm. modern programming has like all this stuff going on, APIs yeah. everywhere. There are all these infrastructure layers. You just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we're like, we'll just build you stuff to tell you everything that's going mm -hmm. on. And yeah. like the thing that's taken us like the last year to build and we're still building is like people run us once. And then mm -hmm. they're like, okay, but now we have to integrate you here, here with like our service mesh and here, like all these piece yeah. pieces. So like what we've been struggling with is like how, like, like how do we get people to like easily integrate us everywhere? And so like mm -hmm. the way I, I put it in my, uh, in one of my tweets was like, you're building like this simplifying abstracting version of that, like just one button, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And we've taken like, we let you sit with all the complexity and like one year later, we're still, mm. <laughs> we're still like <laughs> building all the pieces of all the complexity. Well, it, it turns um, out that, that building the, the, the one true solution to, to all the complexity <laughs> is also hard. And this also takes quite a long time. Yeah, so I have a I think both sides like it, I think just like how do you build like you know even just like a company that requires like so many pieces to be built because other people mm -hmm. are like oh we just demoed our thing and now like we hired an engineer it's built and I'm like oh my god yeah. I am so jealous um and like I don't know if you ran into like similar problems of like finding engineers who can like be early at a startup but deep enough to like handle mm -hmm. <laughs> the beastly complexity of like um, yeah well, the um in the in the early days, I was working with with this engineer Ian Connolly, Ian Connolly, um, and the like we 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 were like you know just brain mesh where was going on in the early days. So when we you know we we the initial version of Dark I built in I built in two weeks and I had like a working blog in the thing that I built in two weeks. And I was like this back end, and front end in Elm. It was like it was amazing, and you know like it barely worked, but but like conceptually it was it was amazing. And so then we said about like, you know, how the, 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 the thing that I knew, of course, is that one, you're building, building live, you know, you're, you're coding in production all the time. Yeah. Uh, two, that, that the editor has to be like part of dark and three, that yeah. the language itself has to, be, yeah. has to be part of dark. And so we built this like nodes and edges thing. Um, yeah. And, you know, you, you, you drag things around and the, 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 um, the nodes are functions and the, the arrows are arguments and, um, and it did not work at all. We had yeah. we had all these people like come in and try it out and be like, uh, so then PPH, Peter Van Hardenberg came over and he was like, 
I have never had as much difficulty coding as, as I have in this. And we just like asked them to write quiz books. Like people were struggling. They thought they were idiots. They thought it was them, not us. Um, and so wow. we, we kind of, that, that was like the early days. And of course we, um, we abandoned that and went with like this, this AST based approach that, that had most of the advantages, but like looks a lot more like, like code. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah, should we just get into demos as, as you explain what Dark does? Because I feel like I like I did not grasp Dark for a long time. Yeah. Um, but I feel like seeing it um, yeah, yeah. Is, is the best way. Yes, I think so. So before before I, I, I quickly uh, or before I start into the demo, I think the sort of like the background context is like uh, the goal is how do you build backends without all the complexity of uh, of building in the cloud today and specifically uh, the tooling complexity, the API complexity, the deployment complexity, and the infrastructure complexity. Um, yeah, and I guess I will I will give a quick demo, and it will be clear how it all works. Cool. Yeah, and um, I think people are think it's very cool and interesting that you're manipulating the AST directly. Uh, someone also wants to know where you inspired by uh, academic stuff as as you're building Dark. Uh, okay, well, those will be. Let me come back to those once we once we do a bit of a demo because I have a I have a script and I'm not very good at giving this. So let's see how it goes. Um, okay, so first thing uh, is that this this is a dark canvas. This is brand new. Nothing has been has been put on it up until now. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hello world app. So uh, I go to slash hello, make a new HTTP handler called hello. Uh, can people see the, the text? I have it quite big, but let me know if, if someone is saying in the chat that it's not. Uh, and so I typed hello world and I'm just gonna open that in a new tab. And that, that is it, it is on the internet. All of you know, nice. all the people watching the stream can go to that and I will, I will see their live traces in, uh, directly in the browser, uh, in, in my editor. Because that's um, how. Oh, Paul, do you want to Zoom chat me that link? Then I can Twitch chat it, or you can Twitch chat it directly. Uh, I can Twitch chat it directly. I thought they would just read it off my screen. That's. that's <laughs> right. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to move around a lot here to see. Oh, there there. See, everyone's clicking it. You can see all these traces coming in. Whoa, uh, that's. Th really these cool. are the actual oh. requests that people are making. You can see, you know, information about people's. Um, you know, about, about people's browser and all that sort of thing. There's someone in Safari there. I see an Apple web kit. Here's someone's IP address, you know, all, all, yeah. all that. Cubite says uh, she can see her house from here. <laughs> um, love it, love it. Yeah, this is, someone else said slick. This is amazing. Cause I feel like I spent a lot of time being like, what does it mean to code against production? And this is like, uh -huh. this is beautiful. Yeah. And so let's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a little bit more dynamic. Uh, we'll have a user. Uh, so now when you go to uh, hello, you get nothing. But if you go to like, hello, Paul, uh, you'll get hello, Paul. Uh, so that's that's our, our new right for people. Uh, your name. This is really, uh, really cool. I, I love this. Yeah. So it, it gets a little more interesting from here because like to um, to create a database is just the exact same thing. So uh, I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to call it hosts for the for the demo I'm going to give in a second. Um, and so you've got you know you've got a host called string. You know like compare this to to writing an SQL uh, an SQL like create statement and like managing the migration and and that sort of thing. It's just um, you know it's just super simple like this. So what what I'm doing here is I'm creating a an office sign in app. Um, wow, that's so slick. We've already. I've. Uh, I pre-installed uh, it. If I would show you the the static thing, if I if I was able. Oh, let me let me zoom out a bit. Um. So I, I pre-uploaded the the assets to Dark, and I pre-set a couple of um, uh, of tokens um to make the uh to make the request. Um. And I'm just going to uh make a very simple uh office sign-in app. So uh let's start with making a, a slash right. Uh, get and I'm going to serve the assets uh, that uh, I uploaded a second ago. So in here, there's there's an index.html, and you see this little play button. I'm going to zoom in again. Uh, see this little play button. This uh, this is an impure function. So 
pure functions get your know, pure stuff gets automatically executed like the hello plus user mm -hmm. thing but impure things uh, do not get immediately evaluated so i'm going to press play and then i can see the value of serve latest which is that you know a 200 response uh, with 860 bytes and yeah, uh, that's let's very open cool. that um, and there so, someone said the text is getting a little bit small text is getting small okay um, let's, let's, go, let's go up one um, um, and then somebody else asked are the links you're sharing permanent like should we include them in the resources for our live stream no no the, the, this is just the, the demo okay, um, okay i mean the, 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 they will be here until the end of time unless i delete them but um but yeah they, they they're just here for the demo Okay. So, so there's a couple of interesting things there. So the first, you know, this uh, we're showing you the values live in your editor, right? So uh, maybe maybe it'd be easier at this font size to show you the user. Um, the when I put my mouse here, I can see the user who made the you know the, the username that someone put in the URL, and so I can just like click through all these. Here's a JSON. Here's boom filter. You've got an L. Um, Someone saying hello, Darklang, Baron fell, hello, hello, folks. Um, so like the I can see in my browser or like in my editor the exact value of a particular expression that people that, that an actual customer has made to your website. That's um, super cool. Yeah. Um yeah. So this I is I oh, sorry. Here. What's that? You go, go ahead, go ahead. I've been talking too much. I am well. So this is um this is incredible. I have not seen a dark demo in a long time, but I feel like um the picture I paint for like why people want to do the stuff we're doing with Akita is we're like collecting all the information so that mm -hmm. in their current systems, like one day we can slowly build like decades from now <laughs> to yeah. a world where like this is true. And I feel like you've taken like the complete inverse approach, which like I love because like then you're just like, look, it's here today, and yeah. we're like, all right, well, like watch your API we'll catalog everything and then one day we'll show right. you everything yeah you can kind of see why we're building all the editor the infrastructure and and the language because like it doesn't really make sense to bite off so much but because we control all of it we can do things like yeah this. Like, do this on, like you know someday you're going to build an akita plugin to vs code that somehow builds into yeah. like the debugging framework in yeah there. yeah exactly Amazing. like years from now we'll finally like, connect yeah. up all the pieces yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is this is incredible because I feel like when I'm like imagine a world where you're like coding against prod like this this is like yeah. as close to what that is as I've ever seen. Yeah. Um. So let me let me go to show you show you another thing. So so this is the request. So this just like serves the latest static assets, and I go to the page and and here it is. Um. And the interesting thing here, I'm I'm going to zoom in again for you people. Um, it says request failed with status 404, right? Because, so it made a, a 404 request to see who the hosts are, and there was no um, there was no no host there was no uh, API available at the slash hosts thing. So I mouse over the 404s um, section, and I can see all the requests that have been made to the site, uh, and I see uh, hosts is one of them. I'm going to fix the font in a second. Uh, I just click, <laughs> Quinn is here, hello Quinn, uh, I just click the plus and I've got, uh, you know, I've got this live request that I made, uh, I'm going to zoom in again, uh, this doesn't really work at, at this level of zoom for you to see it, but I will, I will do my best to accommodate you folks. Um, so, you know, here, here's the request that I made, even before I had a handler for it, the, the, the trace was stored and made available so that when I do have the handler, in this particular case, I don't, I don't want to do anything, I just want to return Paul, um, there, and, um, you know, that's all that it took to create the, the thing. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, Kevin says he, he keeps just saying, or they keep saying neat over and over again. Okay. Uh, they just awesome. can't stop. Um, someone else asked, uh, what happens to this live display when you're getting thousands of requests a second though? Like, what does that look like? Uh, so what happens actually is my database goes out of control. So we have, we have one, one person who's built this, like this site that has like thousands of users and, uh, what, what happens when he, um, when he gets requests is that my the job that cleans up the traces from our database is not able to run and so i've got three terabytes of his traces in my database and almost wow. nothing else. so like everything else is like 100 gigs and then he's got like three terabytes of stuff in there wow um but after i've done the the 
after I've finished the, the backend migration that I'm doing, that will come next. And then I'll get, I'll get the database in a manageable thing. And thank you, Google Cloud, for just continuing to scale that without, without much issue. Cool. This is super, um, super cool. Yeah, so I, I, I could show you more, but I, I feel like this is, this is kind of the, the, the meat of everything. You know, the, this, this idea of live values, um, the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that, that we create did actually, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, I'm going to show you creating a, um, uh, the, the rest of, of the API. So, um, we just got this request, which is, which is a visit, uh, and the visitor here you can see is Gene. Um, so I'm going to put that into a database, uh, that, that said that, that I got, uh, sorry, I'm going to send a notification to myself that I uh, got this, um, that, that I have visitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be let visitor, you can see this is just like regular functional code, a visitor is request.body, uh, and let me put this in the right trace, request.body, and you can see that we autocomplete the, the actual fields from the request. We don't need to like set types or anything to get this. Uh, so this is the visitor. Let uh, host equals request body dot host, and then I'm gonna say let user is db get um, uh, db query one uh, where the uh, from the hosts. So that's a table, and then where the value dot uh, dot host uh, equals host. Sorry, we're a little bit off the screen there. Um, so that is, uh, I'm looking up something in the host table where the value, where the name is host. So you can see no, no writing SQL either. And the answer that I get is, is nothing uh, because of course I haven't added. So I'm gonna quickly add a REPL um, and I'm gonna do DB set uh, and the value is host uh, Paul bigger. And I didn't set up a thing here, so we're gonna just put in my phone number. Do not text me. I do not want to hear it. Um, DB generate key. Um, so generate key. You know, here's a here's a UID. I'm gonna put it in the host table. I'm gonna press play on that. You can see that the host table has locked. So now that there's data in it, you can't just like change the schema willy nilly. Um, and this is all part of like the, the idea that, that Dark is built for, uh, for continuous delivery. Uh, and now when I make this request on, on query one, here's the, here's the user. And so now I'm going to send a text to the users. So I have added an SID in the secrets in advance. You can see that's, you know, you can see the end of that there. Um, wow, this is like also my dream interface for inter like for for coding against APIs. How did you get Twilio in there? Like, did you have to integrate like the Twilio, Twilio API? Uh, no, so we we yeah we 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 actually just wrote this. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, I'm gonna send this to host dot phone host dot host dot what user user there we go user dot dot phone. And the body, I'm going to say, uh, I'm actually going to add a new message here. The message is uh, user of us is here to see you. All right. Message. And uh, something's going on. Uh, yeah. User, it's visitor is here to see me. Uh, so I'm going to press play uh, and we make a request. And Twilio says, this is good. Twilio says it's accepted. Let me, let me check my texts. Uh, yeah, and I have a text here from Twilio. That's, uh, what, where is this? <laughs> that's amazing. There we go, Jane is, Jane is here to team. Nice, that's awesome. So um, yeah, there's some questions for you in the chat. Yes, yes. Um, so the person who asked about how do you handle thousands of uh, requests per second, they're wondering about in the UI, like, do you, like, is it just streaming or do you have some way of um, getting that information? Uh, honestly, uh, the, to, I think you're asking like, are, are there APIs to be able to do like metadata analysis over, over uh, the- I think they were interested in the, the UI presentation of like what happens when there are a lot of requests. Oh, um, so when there's a lot of requests, your browser starts to get really slow. The, the fans 
in your laptop start to spin. Um, and uh, and then you'd like contact me in Slack saying like, you know, you need to do another optimization layer of the, uh, or another optimization pass. Of I see. The so it seems like basically a lot of other stuff happens. So the UI doesn't need to handle it yet. Um, the, yeah, yeah. So the, um, the, the state that dark is in is like, uh, is like delightful, but but very imperfect, extremely imperfect. Um, and there's there's a lot of things that need to be done to get dark from where it is to to something where someone is reasonably putting thousands of requests in the, in this per second. But that that is where we're going. Yeah, I know that makes sense. So related to that, someone asked you how many hours <laughs> it how took to build hours? dark, okay. and then somebody said more like years, and then they amended their question to how many hours to v zero of dark. Okay, so V0 of dark, um, uh, the first thing that really worked took about 18 months. Um, so we're, we're now four years in. Um, and the, uh, a, a very easy accounting is we have spent four and a half million dollars uh, getting this far. So uh, engineers are 100 and let's call it 150K a year. So 30, 30 person years. No, that's not right. Did I do, I'm incapable of doing math. I need that to use a calculator right. for this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's more like 20 person years, but like, you know, there, there, there's definitely a lot of years that, that have gone into. 26 gone into and, and 0.67 person years. Well, we also spend money on other things. So, but <laughs> yeah, C call it, call it four and a half million dollars in, in Silicon Valley. I am. Cool. So um, somebody else asked, is there a data type declaration tool? Do you have interesting stories about data types in the dark philosophy? Yes. So um, types are not a major part of dark at this exact moment, but they, they will need to be before dark starts to get really good. So dark is a statically typed functional language. And it's sort of weird because the implementation is dynamically typed. Like there's just an interpreter that'll take any types, but the, the functions will refuse if you don't give them the, the right types. So in terms of like, you know, what, you know, how types are going to be modeled, it's, it's going to be, you know, an ML. It's, it's yeah. going to be there. There's going to be some types, which we're going to call enums, and there's going to be record types. Um, yeah. And there, there are record types if you like look in the right place, but we actually disable that because the UI for it is terrible. Yeah, something that I'm, I like, correct me if I'm wrong, but something I think is really cool about Dark is it has this like F sharp type providers feel mm -hmm. for like APIs and like anything else you want to access. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the implementation of Dark like is very much ML. So the, the front end is Rescript, the back end was OCaml, but it's being rewritten in F sharp. So it's like, at the start, the, the front end was an Elm. You know, we, we, we've got the transition where, where we're trying to get like every ML language uh, in the implementation at some point. Cool, nice. Um, so someone asked, how does it, how does dark partition code to execute across the backend database, et cetera? Like what's that, yeah. what's that story like? So it's, it's, it's actually really straightforward. Um, we, we run a bunch of interpreters in the cloud. Um, we take an interpreter, we hook it up to a HTTP server. Um, oh, wow. Just, you know, there's some Kubernetes in there, but but basically load balancer, you know, thirty whatever machines, um, and uh, and you know, data comes in, goes into the interpreter. We get your code from the um, from the from our database. We, we we store the ASTs in a binary format in the database. So like you know, we, we get them out in, in a couple of milliseconds. Run the code, send send a response. Cool. Um, let me see if there are other questions. Um, yeah. So like, what are the next steps for dark? Like, what are the, like the next few milestones where you're like, man, like I'm really excited to get this and this mm -hmm. done. And then what's, what's the, you know, long-term, what would be your dream for adoption? Who uses dark? How does it get used? Yeah. So, um, the, uh, I'll, I'll go start it for, for a little moment. Uh, what, what we don't have is product market fit. Um, so for, for those of you who, who aren't like steeply versed in, in Valley lexicon, uh, the, uh, there, we, we have a product and there is a market that does not fit to it yet. So we need to, we need to adapt it until it gets good enough that, that people start to like it. And that's, that's the point at which like people, uh, you know, people use it and they say, oh my God, this is amazing. And then they actually keep using it because today we have people using it and they say, this is amazing. And then they use it a couple minutes more and they're like, oh no. It, it actually kind of isn't, and then they leave. And so we're uh, the the what we need to do in order to make that happen. We need to like uh, 
we need to fix the UI. We need to like make it a little more scalable. We need to uh, handle database migrations. Yeah. Um, we need to expand the language. We need to expand the UI. We need to add a, and, and the most important things actually before before all that, we need to add a package manager uh, and we need to add uh, a user module. So right now, if you try to use Dark, you're 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 going to use it to try and make like a SaaS or something like that, and you're going to be like. I have to implement authentication myself. This is this is ridiculous. Um, and then you're going to try to, to use like a Twitter API or something, and then you're going to realize that you have to write the HTTP authentication yourself, and all of that sucks. So that that's that's what's needed to really get dark to, to somewhere where people uh, where people like it. Yeah, no, I think that's um, I think this is a really interesting discussion because I think it's not just startups that um, you know have product market fit issues, but there are a mm -hmm. lot of research yeah. languages and research systems with product market fit issues, and um, you know, a lot of researchers will argue like that's not relevant to us. That's not like you know, that's, that's not what we were going for. Yeah. yeah, but like I, I think um, I, I think that a lot of what you're talking about with like why don't people use X. Like, mm -hmm. like, like the reasons you give are also very, very analogous to reasons people don't use like many other tools that are, are, yeah. are came, like came from, from research. Yeah. Um, yeah, there um, are some, oh, sorry. In, in our case, you know, someone will come from, uh, from Node or Python or, or, or Rails or Go or Rust, whatever. Um, and they'll, uh, they'll be like, this is amazing. I can do things that I've never seen before. And one of them does not include you know, calling it to the Stripe API. So like, I'm going to go back to um, to using Node or Rails or whatever, where I have stuff that I'm familiar with and where I know how, how I'm going to be able to like, you know, make a payment call in the Stripe API. Yeah. Um, so people um, are asking about how does versioning work uh, mm -hmm. in, um, yeah. in Dark? So um, background to this is the because dark is is this like live editing and editing in production the the goal was very much how do we make this this continuous delivery thing editing in production safe um so the, the, there's a couple of things there so, so there's versioning on all the standard library functions so we never change uh what a standard library function does uh the um i mean well you don't have the screen in front of you, but basically the, the, there's a little suffix to, to everything. If you're using string append, the string append b0, string append b1, string append b2. And v0, um, you know, was, was before we had Unicode. v1 is, is you know, proper Unicode string append. Um, and may, may, maybe, uh, I don't think we actually have v2, but maybe, you know, normalization was broken and, and v2 fixes it. But if you are using v1, we are not going to change v1 out from under you so that your code stays the same. We'll build deprecation and upgrading and that sort of thing into the platform, where we just build a new one, build a new version of the same function, leave the old one exactly intact. Um, and then the new function is the thing that's going to be presented to everyone. Anything that's deprecated isn't even shown to you in the autocomplete unless you're already using it. Okay. Um, so that's, that's versioning on standard library. Um, there's probably going to be language versioning at some point. Um, so far, we've managed to make the language changes forward compatible. Uh, but at some point, you, you will choose the, the language of your handler, and all new handlers will start with the new version of the language. And those are for things that, like, you know, have very, um, like, we have to remove a couple of things from language. We have to add a couple of things to the language. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's versioning around databases as well. So um, the uh, there's a built in migration framework. So the, the standard way that people do migrations. When you're, you know, when you have a lot of scale, is you create a new table with the new schema, and then you read from the new table, you read from the old table, um, and you um, and you, you migrate, you know, one row at a time, and then a background job. And we're going to implement basically, uh, basically exactly that. You tell us the new schema, or I think we will have switched the types by then. So you tell us the new type. Um, mm -hmm. The old type is fixed. You can access it using the new type. You can access it using the old type, and there'll be a roll forward and roll back function. So it's like it's really designed around this idea of you're running a live uh, a live system. And I think um, we will get to a place where where it feels very safe to do that. Right now, it feels mostly unsafe to do that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, Quinn also said. Uh, She's made a link shortener about a year ago. So she shared the link to that in the chat, which is pretty cool. cool. Um, 
And then somebody asked about what's the extent of oh, yeah, story. Oh, yeah, great. That's pretty cool. I'm sorry. Um, and somebody asked, what's the extensibility story like? So can users build pluggable integrations um, like database, Twilio, et cetera? If someone wants to add, if someone's like, look, I want, I love dark, but I want to yeah. use Stripe. Like, can they somehow put Stripe yeah, so, in? Um, so that, that's what I'm referring to as the package manager. Um, and we, we, we have the bare bones of a package manager that has about 20 things in it. And uh, there are security concerns. There's a bunch of things I need to do before the package manager can be um, can be pushed to other humans. Um, but that's uh, that's generally the the idea that it will be possible to uh, create your own packages and put um, URLs or sorry put um, uh, you know whatever you need in them to to be able to uh, to call functions and so on. And then we'll also add things like commands and like templates and that sort of thing to it so that you can be like, you know, here's here's six routes that you can just install to your canvas. So very, very pluggable. Um, I, I also plan on making the editor pluggable. So there's refactoring cool. commands at the moment. And I want those refactoring commands to be written in dark to be executed in the dark interpreter in your in your editor. Um, but that's, that's not how they work now. Cool. Um, and so does the pluggability, like how much does it extend to just things outside of the system, right? So if someone has a bunch of legacy services or yeah. something that they're trying to work on, like, do they just make those pluggable APIs or what's the story? Yeah, it, it, exactly. We, the, we consider the foreign function interface of Dark to be HTTP. Okay. So you okay. want to talk cool. to Perfect. another service or you want to build something that doesn't exist, but like you want to take a library or something and put it into Dark. Put it in right. a HTTP service, put it on yep. service or something and talk yeah, about it. Yeah, cool. I, I love that because I, I feel like I'm like HTTP is just the new like intermediate representation of the internet. And so yeah. like once like once like that becomes the thing, mm -hmm. then like you can you can sort of port things over to something like dark. Um yeah. if if you have like smooth, like a smooth transition story. Yeah. And then you yeah. can just like put a put a nice wrapper around it and right, yeah, and now it's just a function. So, cool. No, that's awesome. And then, like, how, like, do you, does someone have to type like the, the dark interface to the thing? So, it is part of the pluggability, like, like someone has to write out types for what happens. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, everything's just code. So, um, there's no types now. There will be types. Um, yeah, so you, you would I see. add the types and so on. Um. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's that's really cool. The, um, with types, okay. the intent is that we we can infer them directly, but you will do a. Um, you'll use a, a, a refactoring command to take a live value and say, make me a type out of this. Yeah. Um, cool. No, that's, that's really cool. And um, like, what's the story of the, like, who works on dark now, how it's getting mm -hmm. worked on, what, what that's going to look like? Yeah. So uh, we had, we had eight people working on dark um, and right now it is just one. And, and what happened there basically is that we didn't have uh, we 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 didn't hit our Series A, so the you know we raised about five million seed. We were looking to raise another ten million, and we we just didn't have the users. We didn't have product market fit. Uh, it nearly landed, but but didn't. Um, and so it took a took a hard look at the money that we had and you know where we could go and realized that that with the way we were spending, Dark would be dead. Um, it would actually be dead by now, um, and. Um, and so sort of took a hard look and had to do a layoff. And so now it's just me working on dark and I'm starting to hire. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sort of doing, doing a couple of interviews at the moment, um, but, but looking to hire um, some, uh, some early engineers again and just like keep a really small team and, and get it. I think it'll take about, about two years to get to product market fit with a, with a really small team. Yeah, someone in the chat mentioned they really appreciate the transparency, but I think I am. I think it's the much braver thing to do to be very transparent about lack of product market fit rather mm -hmm. than keep taking money and then have it explode somewhere yeah. further down the line. And um, I'm sure people saw the you know the dark website as it is today, and it's kind of I think it's this really like I'm doing a terrible job of marketing dark because I'm telling people that this thing works and it's like the best way to build an API. Yeah. Now, like objectively, it's not. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an okay way to build an API if you really want to right. start through it. And what, what I'm going to do, and you know, this is somewhere on the list is like rewrite that homepage to, to talk about dark as, as a thing, which is on a journey to somewhere great yeah. and you enjoy it. 
if you're in this you know subset of people um but that you know here's where we're going here's where it is now and just be like super like brutally honest about, about this yeah thing. yeah no i think i think like that's also something that we've learned too is like if you promise people a lot of stuff they'll show up but then they're like where's the stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's um, what it was. yeah um Cool. So um, someone asked, any plans to allow library authors to monetize their packages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I guess the interesting thing is, is I have I've thought out like 10 or 15 years in advance. Um, yeah, I've been I've been in dev tools for, for quite a while. I have a lot of opinions about business models and, and about open source and monetization and then you know, sustainability of ecosystems and that sort of thing. Um, and and it's it's pretty obvious to me that that you you want to allow people to monetize their packages. Uh, not only to monetize their packages, but you you kind of want to like, you know, wherever you're making money, you want to like kick back to your ecosystem as well. Mm. So like we we will in the future make money from infrastructure. Mm. Um, and so you know if people are building a lot of infrastructure because you know, someone else built this like wonder, wonderful package uh, that, that everyone is using and that like is, is turning revenue in. It's like cool. at some point, you know, you have to pay for at the very least the future maintainability of, of these things. Um, and, you know, the, this debate is, is going on, you know, through open source and, and has been for, for a while and, and will continue to. But, you know, I, I kind of believe that like, um, you know, kind of revenue helps with with that sort of sustainability and that yeah. like the ecosystem. Yeah. Anyway, you'll be able to you'll be able to to you know give stuff away for free, uh, and you'll be able to like sell um, sort of like the equivalent of SaaS apps. So if you've got something like uh, let's say let's say Intercom is a good example, um, you know we'll, we'll we'll give you some sort of package, or you know someone will create some sort of package that you can install to your own dark canvas. Um, and it will, you know, it'll do something akin to, to, you know, some of the packages or some of the, the SaaS products that are out there and you can, you can sell that, you know, you can, you can make some, some monthly money from it or, or, or whatever, um, in some sort of marketplace, which we're calling a package manager because we sell to developers and developers like package managers and don't like marketplaces. Um, cool. So we just got raided by a bunch of, uh, OCaml people, but they might have all disappeared. Oh. <laughs> There was a, a big bump, and then uh, I think uh, then uh, I don't know how many of them are still here, but hi everyone. There's a, a, a Eduardo has an OCaml live stream, and I mm. think they just finished, so they just showed up. Um, are, are uh, is Dark still mostly OCaml? Uh, Dark is being ported from OCaml to F Sharp on the back end. That's about ninety percent done, and the front end is using the OCaml syntax of Rescript. Um, at some point, I will switch that over to the Rescript syntax, not because I like it, but because um, if you don't play nice with their, if you don't, you don't get to play nice with their tools. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, Paul, but funny story about how I first found out about the existence of Dark was okay. because you hired my student, Jonathan, to consult oh, no on... Jonathan, yeah, because Jonathan oh my God, with, yeah. was with OCaml, and before that, it was Pierre, who I used to work mm -hmm. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. The, so I didn't know OCaml when I started. Uh, this is in 2017. And so uh, I was like, you know, I, I, I hypothesized that, that static types will help. And I didn't like Haskell, no offense um, to any Haskellers in the, in the audience. Uh, and the Python thing I had built just was not, was not doing well for the refactors. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try OCaml, but I have no idea what I'm reading. This is, this is crazy stuff. So I hired... Um, uh, two, in fact, uh, over time, uh, OCamelers from, from the community, um, and uh, yeah, John, Jonathan and, and Pierre, and the um, they sort of taught me OCaml, and they you know fixed up my meager attempts at a build system, and like all the things I didn't know how to do, they they did for me, and actually uh, did did very similar thing with um, uh, your guest from last week, Thomas who was, uh, did some consulting for me when I didn't know how F Sharp worked. He, you know, he, he was at the other end of, of WhatsApp, you know, answering my questions for, for the fee. Yeah, that's cool. Cause I had to sign a, like a permission slip. <laughs> for <Jonathan to> work <laughs> with and I was like, what is wow. going Like, what is this language? Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, small world. Um, cool. So 
like is dark going to continue as a vc backed high growth kind of thing or like what mm -hmm. kind of model do you want to take with it because you know something i i really like thinking about is like the like the funding model behind a language really determines like pretty much everything about it yeah. and someone earlier in the chat asked like you know have you considered asking a company to sort mm -hmm. of sponsor dark like what like what's possible to do and, yeah. and like what what's like what are you hoping to do with it yeah so the the fundamental goal is like sustainability and yeah. you know there, there's obvious like it's a service so there, there, there's obvious like revenue opportunities yeah. Um, I think that that the trajectory that we're on, we're probably not going to get to be able to like run sites at a at a large enough scale in the near term to make that um, to make that like sustainable on like a pure infrastructure revenue kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I would imagine that we will instead um, be focusing on more of a GitHub like model. So you know, charging charging on a per user or the old yeah. GitHub, you know, charge on a on a per user thing. Have public repos be free. Uh, still some some figuring out what like public means in in the dark sense because like I don't want to show people you know that their their customers traces or or maybe I do maybe that's what public means I've, I've yet to figure that out um, and so like just you know have that sustainability and if if while getting dark sustainable it you know it like suddenly takes off and becomes like absolutely massive um then then we might be back in the vc track and certainly my yeah. vcs would be delighted if that happened yeah. and and if that doesn't happen then then we'll figure something sustainable like be I, i'm in this for the long term you know i did well at a circle ci i can afford to to stay doing this for you know un, until it works and, and probably much much longer yeah no i think that's super cool and i think it's it's really good to be like very honest with yourself and everyone like you know mm -hmm. is this like is this uh, a high growth thing yet yeah. Um, I mean, I had I, I had a couple of like walk away opportunities and, you know, sort of had to take you know a, a layoff is like a tough thing to, to go through for, for everyone. Uh, I suppose me much less than the than the others, but, you know, still still a little challenging and you know, had to go through my, my emotions and like figure out, you know, is this something that I want to do long term? And honestly, this is this is my baby. Like this is yeah. you know, what else am I going to do in my life? This is a perfect project for someone who's like a geek about programming languages and into web stuff and like likes UXs. Yeah, this this is great. I'm 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 here for a long time. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. Yeah, because I um last year we we pivoted the Akita team as well, like not quite as dramatically, but I can only imagine what um mm -hmm. how hard it was for for you. Um Cool. So a lot of people have questions. Let me yes, um, yes, take a look. Um, so someone said, are there any particular kinds of people you're looking to engage with in terms of developing product market fit? So are there mm -hmm. like certain kinds of potential users you want or buyers or investors? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the, uh, the, the thing that dark is good for is building, building APIs. Um, yeah. you're storing data, receiving data. Um, what, what works really well at the moment is people building prototypes or people building internal tools. So prototypes are really good because, you know, Dark is actually pretty good at like switching things around really quickly. And we found that people can build their prototypes really quickly. Um, and because it's so quick to build a prototype, they don't mind if they end up having to rewrite it in, in yeah. Note or whatever. And I think like, you know, a recognition that, that that dark is not yet somewhere that 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 you want to build your your SaaS app, but um, but is like pretty good for like a first prototype. And I have a bunch of people who built those prototypes. The other one is if you're building an internal tool that's like sort of like a Slack bot, something along those lines, uh, where you don't have to touch too many APIs. You know, just the you know one the handful that that we have supported. Um, you know that that's a pretty good place to be as well just you know super easy to receive requests and you don't have to you know set up heroku or set up any iam or serverless or lambda or whatever it's just like really easy to get that set up um and i think that that in about i hope about six months we'll be in a place where where things that are using sort of any sort of api uh, are a really good are a really good fit for where dark is then but that, that's not it today that's super cool um Quinn said that she just realized Dark is exactly what she needs for a talk she's giving next week. She needs a small remote API yeah. to use in a demo and Dark is perfect for building that. Um, I, I feel like actually the thing you said about prototyping is really underrated because mm -hmm. I, I, um, I tweet about this sometimes, but um, there's like, there's like, 
this notion of an artist sketch where you, you're just playing with things. Cause I, I think mm -hmm. that a, a lot of the methodology that people prescribe around programming is you write a spec, you know, everything mm -hmm. that's going to happen. And then, then you code to the spec, but like there's, um, there's this whole space of exploration zones. And this is my hypothesis about why dynamically typed languages are popular, why scripting yeah. languages are popular. You're just trying to, you're trying to explore. And I, I feel like mm -hmm. dark seems like a perfect, like artist sketch, like, you know, exploration tool for figuring out like what it is you want. Yes. Um, so I, I completely agree with that. I actually have a blog post about this, um, which I'm going to find for the, um, for the chat. Um, the, the idea uh, or part of the idea of, of dark is, is that, you know, allow these explorations. And I found that that statically typed languages like are not that great at it. Because oh, yeah, absolutely. You have to do all this stuff, you know, with options and results and, and whatever. Yeah. Um, and so we designed this thing, which is called an error rail, which is sort of, you know, if you're, if you're into the, the PL side of things, you know, it's monadic and, and all that sort of thing, but basically it unwrap, uh, whenever you use an object option or a result, we unwrap it automatically. And that brings a ton of that prototyping ease back into it. Yeah. It, it's flawed in a, in a bunch of other ways and needs a lot of like UX work, but um, from the perspective of like writing things really quickly and, and you know, kind of bringing that, that joy that you get from scripting languages, um, I, I, I think it's really, it's really like um, a nice feature for that. And I think that, that you're totally right about that's kind of why scripting languages are great and why they took off so much. Yeah, and I think this is like, I hadn't thought about dark this way at all, but I think that it's, it's like, you know, Figma with a back end or, you know, you know, like, mm -hmm. like the, it's, it's like really the perfect tool for playing around with like how you want interactions to work, mm -hmm. um, yeah. especially yeah. if you need to hook up data. Cause I, I think that like, um, at least one thing we struggle with for all of our interaction design is like, <laughs> we'll design like, you know, clickable, whatever, whatever. And then we'll yeah. pipe like real user data through it looks terrible. And <laughs> I think that like, you know, like all like, like pretty much like half our interactions just like fall apart. Right. Because it's mm -hmm. like, oh, like when you have five things here, it looks fine. But like at a hundred, it just like, can't, you cannot handle it anymore. And yeah. I feel like, um, especially like for, for a lot, like as a lot of dev tools are like actually handling complex amounts of things and you're, you're like trying to, you know, like, I think that a lot of people just like hold their, like, you know, like, I guess when they're doing these interfaces, what I imagine happens given the state of them is they just like hold their breath and close their eyes. And they're like, that part is not really part of our like elegant user interface, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, like, I feel like this, like, how do you do interfaces with, with complex data piping into it and real data? Mm -hmm. Like, like dark seems like a perfect thing for that. Yeah. And a lot of what we're thinking about is like, what, what are the little like platform components that, that you can add extensibility to, to allow people to do anything? Yeah. So if you look like at um, Observable is, you know, this really, you know, it's Jupyter notebooks with like beautiful, you know, APIs and connectivity and, 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 um, and um, beautiful representation of the data. In, um, in the first, you know, in, in the pitch deck that I had for Dark, you know, all of that was part of it. Um, yeah. and it will be someday. Um, yeah. because we're going to take this, this thing where we show you live values and we're going to be like, yeah. okay, you can take the live value and put it into like some charting library or some graphing library. Yeah. Um, and then you can see, you know, the, uh, the number of requests over time, a heat map of how long, you know, there are yeah, like that's super cool. responses are being sent, uh, all, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Someone in the chat said, what if glitch, but backend? Yes. Yes. Very, very, yeah. much, very much so. Um, I, I remember seeing Glitch in like a very, a very early version. Um, I was hanging out with Joel and he, sh he like, he took me to like see this thing. Um, and, uh, and I was like, yes, this is, this is kind of what I'm building. This was, this was just pre dark. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yes, this liveness. And then, and then he typed and there was like a syntax error and it didn't work. And I was like, oh no, no but, but, but different. Um, yeah. I, I, I love what, what Glitch is doing. I think it's great. Um, awesome. Cool. So like, if people want to try dark out, if they want to use dark, um, like what do they do to, do they get any You, you go to darklang.com, you click yeah. the sign up button. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, you, um, you can be in, in in moments. Is there a notion of contributing to dark? Yeah, so we, we have uh, our, our, we are source available um, and the, uh, the repo, I'm pasting it in the chat now. Um, and you know, we, 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 take contributions. There's, um, there's a, there's a CLA and, and that sort of thing. Um, the right now it's in F sharp and, and rescript. Um, but it will, you know, soon there will be a package manager soon. There will be a package manager. 
um, that you can that you can contribute to like the ecosystem at, uh, at large. Yeah, cool. That's really that's really exciting. Um, and and Kevin says, what if MySpace did for inspiring front end devs? I wonder if Dark could do for back end devs. Yeah, I think Dark is yeah. this like very interesting point in like UX and DevX for back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting how to build like like the the this idea of DX um, is like relatively new in in our field. I feel like Heroku probably invented that. Um, like the first people to put uh, like a super nice interface. Um, and like, it really matters. It like, you know, yeah. developers feel it. And yeah, I, I think in dark, you know, th there are some things that are like clearly developer, you know, this is clearly a tool for developers, like, you know, the color scheme, the name, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. and, then, and then there's things that like, just kind of suck for developers. And yeah. you, you just have to like work each of them out. Like I'm going to have to like fix each and every one of yeah. those for someone to feel like you're really at home with dark. Yeah, cool. So we have just a few minutes left. Do you have like final thoughts, um, learnings to share, requests mm -hmm. for the audience? Ooh, uh, I wish I was prepared with this. Um, learnings to share. Um, the, uh, it, is, it is hard to build an editor and a language and a infrastructure all at one. Surprise. Um, but the thing that's really interesting actually is, uh, so Dark doesn't have a parser. Um, what, what we do instead is, is we do like this AST manipulation. And every time you press a character, you know, we, we change the AST to like add that character to the AST in the right place. So never have a syntax error, never a parser, never have a parse error. But it means that adding features to the language, you need to think through um, the interaction model for creating this thing. Like what are the characters that I'm going to press in order to put this thing into the AST in what order? And what happens when I delete them? What happens when I highlight them? What happens um, you know, if, if I'm gonna like cut and paste from it? All, all of that becomes part of the language itself uh, in a way that that just isn't true if you, if you have a text-based language. Yeah, cool. Um... Nice. Well, on that note, I think um, if you're available, Paul, um, the people might have more questions for you in the yeah. Discord um, stream of the week channel afterward. Um, so here, let me actually put in the link from the Discord so that people can join us there. Um, and it doesn't have to be synchronous. So like, I know it's much later over there. So if you have to go do other things, you can like come back. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll but, um, do it. Yeah, um, cool. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. This was um, a really cool conversation, both in terms of the demo and just like all the dynamics around dark. I had been super mm -hmm. curious about like, you know, what, like what's going to happen. Cause it seems like such a cool idea. I wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, become the thing oh, me too. that, um, that it's, it, it's supposed to be. So like anything, anything this community can do to help. I'm sure there are a lot of other people um, mm -hmm. who are uh, also very happy to, to spread the word, spread the, the dark gospel. Awesome. Well, well, thank you for having me and thanks everyone for coming. Yeah, and um, final announcements. So everyone, um, next week we have Ned Williamson, uh, who um, he is a fuzzer. I think that's the best way to describe him. Um, he's the person who's probably taught me the most about fuzzing. Um, he works at Google on the security team. He has, if you Google Ned Williamson hacks, like there's some pretty good hacks he's done. Um, but um, he is just a master fuzzer. Um, and so uh, we had John Regera on a, a few weeks ago to talk about fuzzing. But yeah, Ned is just, uh, he's just a monster fuzzer. He fuzzes everything. So <laughs> next week we'll talk to Ned about that. Um, then we have two weeks off for Memorial Day. Then in, in um, the second Friday of June, um, we have uh, Madan from MSR talking about, um, he's done this uh, research survey of what causes cloud outages. And so I think that'll be um, also uh, related to today's topic, but um, very, very interesting. Um, cool. So yeah, thank you again, Paul. This was, um, this was a really, really nice discussion. So thanks for, thanks for being so honest. Thanks for being so oh, open. So yeah. And we'll see you on the next one. Gonna be a freak, gonna Bye. be a freak. Peace to the world, let it rotate. Sex, money, murder, DNA.